If you'd like to support the channel, check out the links on our homepage. We now have a Patreon account where you can support the channel and you'll get extra content and battle reports. We have a coffee account where you can make one-off donations. You can check out our Instagram for all the channel going-ons and our Goblin Gaming affiliate link where they sell Games Workshop, all kinds of hobby and of course Adeptus Titanicus at reduced rates. Anything you buy using the link, the channel gets a little back in return. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. Back to the channel and uh, this is the Warbreaker assembly part two the final part before painting uh, you will not see this again until it is painted um, the reason I've done it in two parts is I sub assemble for painting and I've got to that stage now and there's also magnets so I wanted to uh, show you that uh, anyone that's bought one of these bear in mind that mine is a prototype and yours will be much shinier so um, some stuff in this might help you it might not because I hate assembly and not very good at it. So um, let's have a look. So as you can see, these are all the pieces. So um, I'm going to come to this bit in a minute. Over here, that is all armor panels. So I have left most of them off. I've put the armor panels on the cathedral bit. But everything else around the body and the arms and everything else I've left. So that is literally bags of armor panels. I'm sure most of you will probably do the same thing. Do a lot of um, blue tacking, dry fitting uh, before you, you uh, glue these bits. So as you can see, I've got the main structure at the back here and I've got the arms on. I'm going to show you what I've done with the magnets there. And I do uh, believe that your finished copies will actually come with arm magnet slots now. Uh, 10 by 3 N52s. I've got the head separate. I've got a couple of the guns going here. I've got all the domes separate and these little guns here. So as you can see, panels, domes, guns, that's quite simple. Let's have a look at the torso and the arm magnets. Okay, so here's the main, uh, the body and the main structure and the arms. Um, I've got it on a 200 round base. Um, the rules, if anyone's watched that video, have been designed around 200 wide. I am getting a 200 by 155 oval and I think that will be um, accessible at some point um, and I think that might be the future 200 round is fine um, I think the key thing is just 200 wide um, is, is the key so um, yeah let's have a look at the arms you can probably see the magnet in the top there where I've drilled through so I actually drilled mine Bought some 10 by threes. Uh, Danny, who designed this, had some 12 by threes, and um, had a quick chat with him on Insta, and he said 10 by threes will probably do, but they did work a treat. You know, this is hefty bit of resin, uh, and they they don't move. They're fantastic. I mean, obviously you can rotate the arms, but there's no sag uh, in them at all. So I do believe, don't quote me, I think you're actually going to get arm slots. So what that does do for the future. Um, presents itself for possible different arms so which I think is fantastic um, and will give this model much more scope in the future so arm magnets are, are a thing and uh, that is good news so there you go there's the cathedral all dry fitted together um, I put a bit of green stuff in the gap here um, and I've left the guns that go in here I'll just probably paint them separate um, there you go, so all dry fits really nice together. For this I'll put the panels on, um, it just, the way it clips together, and I'll show you in a minute, it just helped them fit together nicely. So I'm gonna pull this apart and show you the sub-assembly, and I'm gonna show you the magnets that I've put in here. So there you go, there it is all in bits, and I'm gonna paint each one of these separately. And then, um, there you go, just slots together with a nice big plugs there, really simple. Um, I'm going to paint all those separately and then um, stick it together in one go. It's, it's entirely up to you. This is just, for me, it's just holding something that big and 
if I make a mistake, it's, it's just something easier to correct on one piece than trying to mask up the whole thing again, depending on what I'm doing. So the last thing I really want to show you is these bits on the side. Now, um, you'll notice when you get these, there's missile pods on the back. Uh, so these cannons are forward facing. Um, if you want to use our rules, then I would recommend magnetizing these, and I have done so. Um, because the missiles, I've used um, three by, I think I used three by ones. Um, I might go a bit deeper if I was you, maybe three by twos, N52s of course. Um, that way the missiles can fit in the front and the cannons can then go in the back um, because they have rules different rules. So this is one location, uh, hit location, uh, it's a special location I believe in the rules and the missiles and the cannons fire forward and aft. So you pay the points for the whole turret but you may want this eruption lance firing forward or you might want the, uh, the missiles for a bit more shield stripping. So I've used some little magnets in there, I literally just drilled them in Dead simple, didn't take long. And when that's in there like that, I can just swap them around. So yeah, magnetize those turrets and those front and aft weapons if you can be bothered, I would recommend it. And definitely get some magnets for the arms. So there you go, that's it from me. Um, there you go, that's the Warbreaker also in all its height and glory. Someone did ask me for some War Master comparisons. So there you go, there's two. Uh, apologise for the background there, it's a bit shabby, that's the garage right now. Um, and that's that's me assembled, so um, like I said, you won't see this again now from me until it's painted, and I look forward to showing that to you. So um, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.